In this video, I want to talk about artificial intelligence and language and the quality of language that robots and machines will soon be able to produce. Hi everybody, this is Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com. This is a channel where I teach you about communication skills so you can improve your relationships, succeed at work, and be more confident. I was recently browsing on the web and I came across an article by an organization called OpenAI, which is an, kind of an open source artificial intelligence research lab funded by Elon Musk and a variety of other people in Silicon Valley. These people are sort of scared about the possible misuse of artificial intelligence, and so they've funded this research lab to try to make sure that these tools are open to the public and don't fall into the wrong hands. Well, recently they produced uh, what they call a language model, which is a sort of an artificial intelligence program that can produce uh, human language, in this case, English. They trained it on 40 gigabytes of text, which was 8 million web pages. And they trained it in an incredibly simple way. You may have heard about neural networks or deep learning, machine learning models. That's what they used. And they trained it on an incredibly simple task. They would give it a bunch of text and they would try to uh, train it to predict the next word. So this is purely a statistical prediction based on the frequency of occurrence and the patterns of association between words. All this model was trained to do was take a group of words to the left in the sentence and predict the next word that would appear in the sequence. <clears throat> but it did this many, 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 many times, you know, on 8 million web pages and, and uh, what, a 40, gigabytes, 40 gigabytes of text. So there was a ton of training that went on. And then they, they were able to, once this model was trained, they were able to prime it with a little bit of language and then it would continue to produce language. And the language that it produced when I read it absolutely stunned me and kind of freaked me out. I mean, we've all heard predictions about kind of robots taking over all of our jobs and artificial intelligence approaching human intelligence. And most of us, I included, thought that this was, you know, a decades into the future. And many of these claims would be exaggerated by people in Silicon Valley. But when I read this particular uh, paper and the, the, and when I read the text output that was produced by this computer program, I was really stunned at its quality. And I'm going to put a link down in the description so you can go look at it yourself. But it's um, frighteningly impressive. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. Now, there's already been some criticism of exactly what they showed and did the, did the computer program in effect sort of memorize certain text from the web. I'm not sure those criticisms are valid for reasons which I can discuss maybe in another video. I've already talked about um, how language is idiomatic. That is, none of us are creating completely original things when we're talking anyway. We all have basically memorized a large number of phrases and we recycle these phrases from a lexicon or a dictionary of phrases in our head. So if that's what the computer is doing, that's basically what human beings are doing too, at least in, in my belief of, of how human beings produce language. So in addition to being able to produce text, once it's kind of uh, primed with a little bit of text, it can also answer questions about text, it can do summarization, and it can do machine translation. And this is all, it was never trained on any of those tasks. There are computer programs specifically trained to answer questions, specifically trained to do machine translation, uh, but this program was only trained to predict the next word in a sequence. And just being able to do that, <clears throat> excuse me, it was still able to do all these other tasks, summarization, translation, question answering, as well as generation of spontaneous text. Now, th this is all amazing, and I encourage you to go and look at the samples of text uh, and see what you think. There's some underlying deep theoretical and scientific disputes at stake here. Some of you may have heard of the famous linguist and scientist Noam Chomsky. Basically, his theory of language said that language is produced by an internal grammar that we're born with, a set of rules, and that uh, all language is produced by these rules, and if any computer could ever produce language, it would also have to contain these rules in order to produce and understand language. Of course, this computer program has no rules like that. All it was was statistic memorizing or learning these extremely complex patterns, patterns of association between words. So the there's this Chomskyan school of thought which says language is this set of rules and every sentence we create is unique and creative. And there's this kind of opposing school of thought which says, no, really, um, 
language is based on learning these patterns of association and these statistical patterns in language. And, you know, in my opinion, it's that second view which is winning the competition because I think what you see is basically patterns of association being learned by these computers and then these computers being able to produce incredibly realistic text. Whereas these systems that are based on rules and grammar can't do anything like this in terms of the quality and the quantity and the flexibility and the robustness. So I think it's really, really interesting to think about and it made me think about, you know, uh, how soon will we as human beings be made obsolete by these machines? In particular, one of the skills that I value most and one of the reasons that you know I, I can have a good job that pays me well and a secure career is because I can write very well, I can speak very well. So my command of language and communication is one of my most valuable skills as an employee. Now, I read this thing and I, I've, I've thought for a long time, well, those skills the computers won't be, able to do for, won't be able to do for a long time, so I'll have a secure career. But when I read this paper, I started to think, oh man, if computers can write as well as I, or can basically maybe read everything I've ever written and then write just like me, I'm in big trouble. Um, so I want you to think about that as well and think about what do, you, uh, what do you think robots are capable of doing in the near future in terms of their skills with language? And uh, do you feel threatened like they could put you out of work in the future? One other interesting fact before I wrap up is that the people who produced this computer program were so uh, concerned about its capabilities that they actually refused to release the, the code, the computer code, behind the full model because they were afraid if it fell into the wrong hands people could produce extremely realistic deep fakes, that is a uh, fake language they could use on Twitter or Facebook or other places to you know, create fake news and disrupt democracy using fake news. So they didn't even release it, which I think is a very interesting decision in terms of the ethics of this kind of work. I'm not sure I totally agree. I'm not sure I understand enough about the details to know what the right decision is. But think about that. Think about you know what are robots gonna be capable of doing in terms of language and how soon. What do you think you're capable of in terms of language skill that robots are not capable of or artificially intelligent machines are not capable of and maybe will never be capable of? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thanks for listening. I'll also link to the, the, the scientific paper and the article on the web about the system that I'm talking about. I hope you'll check it out. It's really, really interesting. The technical details can be pretty intimidating. You don't have to read the scientific paper. You can just read the, the article on the website and you'll get the main idea and you'll see examples of the text that this computer program generated. Uh, if you like this kind of video, give it a like. Uh, if this is the first time you've been to our channel, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so YouTube can let you know next time I upload a video. Go on over to howcommunicationworks.com and sign up for our mailing list. If you do, I'll send you an ebook about empathy, which I think you'll find to be useful. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and check out that robot-generated text. I think it'll blow your mind. We'll see you next time.